And then I guarantee you, whether you're 40, 50, 60, you're going to be adding some lean muscle tissue. Building muscle just got easier if you're a man over 40. Hey man, Gary Walker here and welcome back for another video. So I'm gonna give you four tips to build muscle now that you're 40, 50, 60, even if you're 70, all right? Now, the key to building muscle is doing things a lot different than you used to do when you were in your 20s, even in your 30s. So many different things that are taking place in your body physiologically and even psychologically that you need to adjust for to make sure you're still able to build muscle now that you're older. The first thing, the tried and true, the first tip, you still gotta make sure you're lifting weights. You wanna make sure you are doing some resistance training. Now, you don't have to do as much as you probably did in the past, five days, six days, back when I was younger, even seven days a week, all right? But four days a week is typically what I feel is optimal. Now, three days a week, if that's all that you have in a busy week, then get your three workouts in, make sure you're pushing yourself and challenging yourself. If you can do four, four is going to be perfect, man. But here's the thing, you gotta focus on some compound movements. That means you wanna be doing some variation of a squat, some variation of a back row, some variation of a chest press and a shoulder press. If you're doing those exercises, your body's gonna build more lean muscle tissue. It's also going to increase your testosterone levels, which is gonna be key now that you're an older man because when you get older, testosterone naturally starts to decline if you get less active and you eat like crap. Once you remove the processed foods and add in some whole nutrient-dense foods, that's gonna make a big difference already. And then by adding the resistance training, that's the key to building more muscle. I'm gonna share a tip here in a minute though that's gonna be tied to this first one that's gonna guarantee you have a great chance to add some lean muscle tissue. With that said, let's go to the second tip and that is do not be afraid to eat carbohydrates, man. So, so many guys that I work with, they either Google, they're listening to their friends, listening to random people about how to eat, how not to eat, and they've been scared to eat carbohydrates. Your body wants carbs, especially as an older guy, but you gotta make sure that you are earning those carbs. So for instance, if you're working out with weight training four days per week, if you're doing four resistance exercises, I want you to eat carbohydrates on those days. All right, eat carbs. That's gonna fuel your workouts, fuel your recovery. It's just gonna make you feel so much better and so much more energized. It's gonna make a massive difference. Here's the thing though, when it comes to carbohydrates, I like you to bracket those around your workout times if possible. The reason I'm saying that is some of you guys work out extremely early in the morning. Now, for those of you that work out mid-morning, noon, evening time, something like that, I want you to have about a third of your carbs before your workout, have about a fourth of what's left during your workout called an intra-carb drink or something like that. And then you can have the rest of your carbs at the end of your workout. So your first meal after your workout. That's bracketing your, your workout with carbohydrates. So meaning, let's say you're working out at two o'clock. Well, lunch, you're gonna wanna have 30 to 50 grams of carbohydrates. Now, during your workout, you can drink some of your carbohydrates if you want to. That's just gonna make sure that you aren't burning out too quickly. You're not gonna be, your body's not gonna release cortisol too early within your workout. I want you to sustain good intense workouts for at least 30 to 45 minutes. Now, if you can do that without that carbohydrate in you, then that's fine. Just make sure that your first meal after your workout, you're getting the remainder of your carbohydrates. So that's basically what I want you to do with the carbs. Again, do not be afraid to eat them though. That's gonna be huge. The other thing you really gotta focus on, so we kinda touched on the resistance training. And again, I'm gonna, add another tip to piggyback off of that one here in a minute, but the carbs are key, but then also protein. Just, just keep in mind, you gotta make sure you're eating enough protein. So 0.8 to one gram of protein per pound of body weight or goal weight. I wanna say goal weight because if you're say 200 pounds, but you wanna be a lean 180 pounds, then about 180 down to 155 
grams of protein is gonna be sufficient. So that's what you wanna focus on. And that may sound like a lot, but it's really not, especially when you're not eating a whole lot of carbohydrates, because the last thing I want you to do is load up on a lot of fats, and you only have those three macronutrients. So the protein is gonna be the king macronutrient for you. So eating more protein also helps burn body fat. Eating more protein helps build lean muscle tissue. Eating more protein helps keep you satiated. So it's a very important macronutrient. Just make sure you're getting 20 to 30 grams of protein every three hours or so, and that's gonna be sufficient to maximize muscle protein synthesis, which is gonna be key when your goal is building more lean body mass. All right, so with that said, rest and recovery, man. You gotta make sure you're focused and prioritizing not only rest, as far as sleep, you know, you want your seven to nine hours of sleep each night. That's gonna be key for lowering cortisol levels, optimizing testosterone production and growth hormone production, just overall recovery from your workouts and from the daily stressors. So you want the seven to nine hours of good sleep. Now that's just one way to rest, one way to recover. The other is making sure you're following a sound workout program. So when I say four days a week of resistance training, you wanna make sure that you're taking breaks between specific body parts, you're allowing your muscles to recover from workout to workout, and especially if you're working out week in, week out, because that can compound over time. If you're working a specific body part three times a week, over four weeks, six weeks, eight weeks, then you're gonna have a lot of wear and tear on the joints that are attached to that muscle. So that's the other key thing. You gotta be smart with your workouts. So just make sure you're following a, a sound workout program. And now with that said though, we've kind of touched on the rest and recovery, what I'm talking about. You gotta make sure when you're doing your resistance training workouts that you're pushing yourself and challenging yourself and using something called progressive overload. Now, that's what I meant by piggybacking off of the resistance training. Once you get your resistance training workout schedule, you got your nutrition in check, then the next thing I want you to do is get a journal. You can either get a journal or a workout app. There's several great workout apps out there. I have one for my guys that I coach. They've got a great app that tracks their workouts, their reps, their sets, the rest, the weights they use, all of that, so overall total volume. That's something I want you to do. I want you to utilize a journal or an app. The reason being is a lot of times you go into the gym and I've been a coach for over 30 years, so I can tell you this from 100% experience, I've seen it time and again, that people do the same weights over and over and over, the same rep schemes, the same workouts, over and over for years and they never change and wonder why. You have to give your body a reason to change because our bodies are equipped for something called homeostasis. If you're not challenging it enough, it's going to adapt to what you're doing and it's gonna level itself or balance itself out. And it's not going to change by, it's not gonna add more muscle. It's not gonna give you more strength because it's going to adapt to what you've been doing constantly. That's why when you have a journal, I want you to write down how much weight you're lifting, how many sets you're doing, how much reps you're doing, and how much rest you're taking between each set. All of those are crucial and vital to your overall success for muscle growth. Now, every week to every two weeks, make sure that you're updating your journal and you're making sure that you're making an improvement somewhere. Either you're adding five pounds here or there, or you're adding one or two repetitions to that same weight, or you're cutting some rest. If you're resting 90 seconds between sets, rest 75 seconds or 60 seconds to challenge your body, increase the intensity of that exercise or that workout. So if you're making those adjustments on a continuous basis, that's progressive overload. You're making your body have to respond by either building more muscle, building more strength, or something like that. So that is going to be the key. Now, none of this is difficult. You just have to do it. You just gotta put in the work. You gotta put in the effort. You gotta make sure you're not just going through the motions when you're in the gym. You gotta make sure they're somewhat challenging and pushing yourself when you're doing these. So just do that consistently. Make sure you're making consistent progress. And then I guarantee you, whether you're 40, 50, 60, you're going to be adding some lean muscle tissue. As long as you're following these things, you're gonna get leaner, stronger, tighter, a little bit more strength and muscle, all the things that you're looking for as an older guy. So put these things to use, man. 
Thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any questions at all, just leave them in the comment section. Other than that, thanks again for watching my video. And as always, man, get busy, get after it, and God bless.